Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see about the symbolic constants in Java. So we know that constant cannot change the value during the execution. Constants may appear repeatedly in the number of places in a program. Constant values are assigned to some names at the beginning of the programs. Initially, we give some name to the constant and that name can be referred throughout the program. That is called as a symbolic constant. It can be referred subsequently in the program. And when you are using this symbolic constant, it will improve the readability of the program. Actually, what is readability is, suppose if you are using a variable constant value called pi. Okay, instead of using the value pi as 3.14 in the program, if you use the variable, there is a constant name pi throughout the program, it will give the readability of the program that it you can say that the pi is used in the program wherever the constant is referred. So how to declare the constant? So this is the way. Syntax is final is the keyword and type is the type of the constant. That constant may be a integer, numeric or character or string and then symbolic name. If this is any name by the user is equal to value. Let us see an example to understand here. Example is final is the keyword, float is the type. That may be, as I told you, it may be integer, character, float, string or anything. So now it is float and pi. Pi is the symbolic name. This is the user defined variable. Normally we are using this capital letter to give the symbolic constant name but it is only a convention. It is not a, it's not a must. Okay. And then the value is equal to any value that can be assigned as. So it is float. So 3.1415. So another example is final int strength is equal to 100. So final is the keyword, int is the data type and strength is the variable name and value is equal to 100. So this is the way we have to declare the symbolic constant in Java. So there are some rules you have to follow while declaring the, the symbolic constant. So symbolic constant it takes the names as the same name form of the variable names. That means how we are using the variable name the same way we can also give the name for the symbolic constant. So after declaring the symbolic constant, they should not be assigned any other value within the program by using an assignment statement because already we have assigned the symbolic constant value and that same symbolic constant should not be assigned some other value using the assignment statement. So the variable is set to a value in the declaration and cannot be reset. And any such attempt is caught at a compile time. Actually what does it mean is if at all we again redeclare or reassign the value to some other values in the program the compiler error will show a error in the program. For example already we have in the previous slide we have used this strength as an integer and value as 100 okay if it is in the same program if if it we are using as strength is equal to 200 this is actually illegal why because this strength is the symbolic constant we are just defined before in the program using the final keyword final int strength is equal to 100 again in the same program we should not use the same variable strength and use the assign some other value as 200 but we can use as a variable the name can be used as a strength in any part of the program but we should not assign some other new value to the symbolic constant once it is assigned a value okay so now let us see the next topic which is typecasting so typecasting means converting a value from one data type to another data type there are two types of typecasting, widening typecasting and narrow typecasting. So what is widening typecasting is converting a lower data type into higher one. That is called as a widening typecasting. So typecasting means making one type to the other type. It is also known as implicit conversion or casting down. It is done automatically. That means when you give the we can do implicitly or explicitly. Explicitly means it should be done by the programmer using the statement. Implicitly means system, the compiler, that means the software will automatically do it. That is called as an implement conversion. It is done automatically. It is safe because there is no ch chance of lose the data. It takes place when. So when now it can take place, both data types must be compatible with each other. What is compatibility is one should go with the other. 
that is called as an compatibility so the target type must be larger than the source type what is the source type is suppose if we are using a as the integer and we are casting into float here a is the int is the source type and float is the target type so what is the rule is the target type must be larger than the source type actually the meaning is suppose if you are yeah if you are putting an object in a small container it will not fit it will be a problem suppose if you are putting some components in a big container it will fit into that okay that means the same example we here also fits if the target type is larger means we can put that value the small value into the larger value it will not lose anything but the reverse is we lose some data suppose if you are putting some big data into a small container the data will be lost okay so, so here that is the reason the target type must be larger than the source type and then so this is the way how this uh, widening typecast happens so we have it will transfer from byte to short then short to care care to int int to long long to float and float to double so here the memory content is higher in this range so byte contains less bytes to that means less less bits to store and short contains higher little bit higher and in this order the memory capacity or the memory needed to store the data will be more so double requires more memory space so that is so this is the order of this widening type casting so let us see about the narrow type casting so what is narrow type casting is converting the higher data type into lower one is called as a narrowing type casting it is also known as explicit conversion or casting up it is done manually by the programmer it, the uh, widening is done implicitly by the system this is manually by the programmer if you do not perform the casting then the compiler reports a compile time error okay so let us see how the order goes is the reverse order double float long int care short and byte here double occupies more memory space and byte occupies the least memory space so it is called narrowing type casting that means higher to the lower that is called as a narrowing type casting so this should be done only by the manually by the programmer but the reverse case will be done automatically by the system so that is shown in the diagram here so this is narrow type casting it will coming from double towards the byte and what is widening type casting is it will travel from byte towards the double okay so here this type casting should be carefully done in order to avoid any loss of data while saving the data from one type to the other type so that's all and thanks for watching